And as it's in the title, not only telematics. So if you look at digitalization, many things have been mentioned, but it's, I, I just put it into four areas. One is technicality of the car or the vehicle, which Thomas just mentioned, uh, the self-driving features, platooning for trucks. If you see the trucks in Australia, they expect about one-third of the tonnage being platooning within the next three years. And that's very simple. If you've ever been in Australia, you go straight for 1,500 kilometers. There is not much what you can go wrong if you just electronically link those vehicles together. Then you have the telematics. Uh, I will show some examples. And then you have the big data. And part of the big data is also the OEMs uh, putting together all kinds of data in the future. And we heard already today that this will be very, very decisive, how we as an insurance industry can access those data, that there is no monopolization by the automobile manufacturers. And guess what? We have strong allies. The biggest ally for us is independent workshops, because they will lose much more than insurers by not having access to those data. If Volkswagen, Mercedes, BMW, who name it, I'll just take the German ones, if they have the access and can call the driver and say, hey, please come in with the car, there is a problem, or there could be a problem with this and that, and they have a monopoly on that, this will kill any independent workshop. And this is very important for us as insurers, because if there's no independent workshops, the repair costs will go through the roof. So we have a vital interest, together with those guys, to somehow stop them. And that's very quickly, with eCall, it's 2018, it's next year. Uh, so it's not long ago. I think has not been mentioned yet too much, only a little bit by, uh, uh, by Mr. Child, but that's something where we should really work a lot on. Um, then the question is, are we allowed to use certain data? Uh, uh, is it correct that we have all this differentiation between up and low? We'll come to that. Discrimination risk, mentioned that before. Somebody whose name is Piotr will pay a lot more in England than if his name is Peter. Uh, statistically, probably even true. But. And then the question of cost-efficient systems. We talked about that as well. Um, take a country like Latvia, where the average premium for a three-month policy is 27 euro. Uh, they have 18% cost, which is 5 euro. Imagine any mature market handling an MTPL policy for 5 euro costs. So efficiency is huge and it also puts a block to what you can do and play so you, there's always has to be the drive on cost when you have cars on one side and on the other side telematics it's opposing di dimensions there's a behavioral parameterization so of the owner and driver which we already have for a long time like age bonus malos residence occupation and then the classic, classic approach of telematics, where, when, how, how much, how long. And the whole thing is now put under a total new scrutiny of things like share cars. Word, I don't know who was saying that this morning, 50% less vehicles uh, in a couple of years. Uh, that's also because we have share cars. And then you have the objective ve uh, vehicle-related parameters, the classical ones is what type of vehicle, what the value is of the vehicle, the age of the vehicle, place of registration, and now you have all these uh, automated driving features. Where are we on this curve? Uh, uh, two, three years ago, I think we were really on a hype, and insurers were not really watching it. I think today we're somewhere through most of the disillusionment, at least in a, outside the rainbow press, in rooms like here, I think we know what can be done, what cannot be done, in, in, to, a, to a large extent. I think the speeches have shown that. And the insurance industry is, is, is pretty good. We have just a couple of days ago from Simon Kucher and partners, there was an inquiry in Europe, and 87% of the insurers have a digital roadmap, a proven one, which is really show, showable. And this is 28% points more than any other industry. So we as an insurer 
aren't that bad in, in, in being there. Maybe we're not so illusionist. We're not playing too many games. And the world, of course, is nonlinear. Um, what Thomas mentioned, he took, by example, at that time, world would come. 20 years ago, you could do great predictions, but you wouldn't know that there would be a smartphone. Who knows what will come next? I tell you one thing I never thought about. In the US, there's big problems with open space offices. Why? Because you can look at the monitor. And there may be protected data, which you can see. So some companies have come back to own offices. But what is the majority of the company thinking of? Abolishing monitors. Taking glasses, specific glasses, which already work to a certain degree, where you get the projections and where you can steer the mouse with your eyeball. And that's not, that's not future. That's today. In some companies, you have that already in order to avoid all the legal problems. So you have changes, they're non-linear. Non and here the insurance industry is much better than anybody else. You know? We look at exposures. This is future. This is uncertainty. Our, our industry has costs which we know afterwards. It's the only industry where we don't know about the costs for years to come very often. You know? Which means we are part of our genes is uncertainty. So this should be great for making uh, digital digitalization really work. Automated driving. <laughs> I use this slide because the guy, uh, Yulis, from uh, Latvia, he's uh, the head of the Automobile Association. He took that in one of our speeches. He said, this girl is the last person in the world who will make a driver's license, if these things are correct. Uh, it's only about 15 years that people expect the automated driving. Is that true? Don't know. What is it true is there was a nice study, and I want to show you some of those results. What will be the actual reduction in costs due to those features for motor insurance in Germany, really taking down each individual parameter? So they took FAS systems and AF systems, so automated driving itself or assist systems. By the way, the park and maneuvering assistant is more what than the beep, beep, beep. It is really that automatically the car parks. Then they had two scenarios based on past experience of like ABS. What will be the penetration in the fleet of the insured vehicles? If it's fast or slow. So you can see on the fast one, most of those features will be in there in 25 years. If it's slow, 70% of the fleet will have in 25 years. So it takes time. And then they came to a result. And you can see this is for motor liability. It's between 12 and 24% decrease until 2035. That's a lot. But it's not a revolution. It's an evolution. And if you then look what features it is, it's more or less two features. It is the parking. Sure, I mean, this is what happens today. The beep, beep, beep doesn't help because it beeps already when you're already still half a mile away from the next car. So it doesn't warn you to the right point. But if the car parks by itself, this will really reduce a lot. And then it is the um, emergency braking assistant uh, on highways and in cities. Those will be responsible for 80, 90% of those uh, losing losses. This is cars. This is not trucks or uh, other vehicles. It's even less in Casco. Uh, it's between 7% and 14% until 2035. And here it's more, almost exclusively the parking assistant. This study you can find in, the, in German, sorry, in the GDV website. Uh, so you, if you take that in there, uh, automated driving, automatisiertes Fahren, you have to use a German term, you will find a, a, a 25 page detailed uh, um, aspects, and this is just one page, which also defines exactly how it's done, the methodology, etc., which maybe is interesting for you uh, to go forward. So automated driving will have a significant impact. It's the question how much it will be when. Is this too pessimistic? Don't know. And then we have the Internet of Things in the car. We had a similar slide already today. Um, 
how can the car manufacturers be stopped from dominating everything? And how can the insurance industry really come in? And then we have telematics. What I show you instead of general terms is something where we reinsure with three insurers in Moscow. Uh, telematics. Moscow, telematics. Well, w guess what? If you look around, Central and Eastern Europe has pretty good IT solutions. Uh, if you see Polish, how often you have Polish names in that area, how often you have Russian names, sometimes also in a negative area, um, they're good at it. They're really good at it. And what I want to show you here is three things which I thought is not down the road for everybody. One, they have a purely app model, which for downloading or accessing it, it's two minutes. Two, they have parameters defining where and how the people are driving, where, meaning what is the possibility of an accident. And three, it's based not on a kilometer, it's based on a minute. Yeah? So you pay roughly op uh, four cent per minute of driving. Because time is a much better measurement than kilometers. If you go on a beautiful highway, 100 kilometers, the risk is much lower than, let's say, going one kilometer in the center of Buc uh, Bucharest at rush hour. Uh, so it's, it's, it's more a time element, which allows the two other impact factors, the, the probability of an accident, so how, what, on what road you are, or your driving behavior, to have much less impact as a parameter on the base rate. And you can press the button, you're covered, press the button, you're not covered anymore. There is driving areas and there is what, what so-called uh, non-movement risks. Yeah? So if you have your car standing there against theft, hail, etc., that's one. Driving is the other. What is so good, we had the last one we did from the first moment of discussing it until they really have the first cars insured was less than four weeks. So really fast. Uh, and w we are monitoring it a lot. We think this is a very good product, uh, especially for all the cars. It's only Casco, by the way. It's not NTPL. And the company's name is R Telematica. They're interested in coming into other countries as well. This is a word from our sponsor. Telematics in general, though, I'm, I'm a bit skeptic. Uh, for those who know the next slide, please excuse. I'm just trying to sum up who is a good telematic risk. Okay, it's somebody who drives very little, correct? So a few kilometers. Only in good weather, never exceeds, never exceeds speed limits, correct? Uh, and in general, no strong acceleration and braking, correct? Uh, do I, Anybody who, who is disagreeing that this is a good telematic risk? I'm talking about her. She's the worst risk, by the way. Uh, this is a German curve, and you can see the old age is worse than the 17-year-old. And it's, if you look over time, the old age people increase. Uh, so exceeding 90 per kilometer accident ratio is about 19 times as high as for the people with 27 to 42 years of age, which is the best risk. Yeah? So, telematic is not really proven. Nobody, if anybody knows anybody who can prove that they can distinguish this from a, somebody just driving careful, please call me. Summary is the key observation. If we take it from the pricing in general, we have a huge amount of parameters influencing the motor insurance premium. Two sectors, subjective, objective, and this is, both are changing and both are somehow the question, would you go more for the car or more for the behavior? To make it too complicated is not the possibility, at least for MTPL, because you need to be really efficient. And then you have to also think, 
what kind of spread will you be allowed to do? In the US, it's already forbidden, besides the gender, is occupation, is education. Yeah? I think there was a good chance that for motor insurance, age will be not allowed anymore in Europe, because it's only a correlation, it's not a causation. Yeah? Same like gender. So I think there is a lot of political pressure of really keeping things more or less even, and to say, well, what the rich pay for the poor. There was a nice study from a German, from a Cologne University of Applied Sciences, what factors are considered fair. Uh, and you can see that those things you can influence, they are considered fair. Those you cannot influence are considered unfair, uh, like gender, like uh, weekdays when you're, when you're driving, etc., etc. So there is a lot of, lot of, let's say, subjective things which will influence ethical definition. My advice, or not mine, Warren Buffett's advice, what you should do with digitalization in general, or, or any innovations. Should you be fast, or should you be more slow and think about it and only take those that, uh, things up that are good. And you say, well, it's a very simple answer. The early bird catches the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. Meaning, a good copy is better than a bad invention. I think, ch ask any Chinese, he knows exactly what we're talking about. Yeah? And Warren Buffett continues, in insurance, most opportunities seem to be cheese, not worms. Thank you for your attention and for the discussion. I'm really happy to, 